He could have just created men and there would have been no need for women. He could have just done that. When that was the situation, God looked and he said, this isn't good. Hey guys, so I woke up today and I found out that today is the day of the woman. It's International Women's Day. And uh, in honor, I guess, of, of this day, I wanted just to take a few minutes and talk to you both you incredible men and women about some things that God has been sharing with me. And I wanna speak specifically to the women in particular who have felt um, a call of God upon their life, who have felt a stirring or a desire to kind of use their gifts, raise their voice, for God's glory and who might be wondering, you know, is this born of God? Does God bless women in ministry? Is this God's heart for women? If you've ever wondered that, if you've ever been conflicted with these thoughts, if you've ever read some passages of scripture and kind of been like, whoa, that doesn't seem to align with everything else. I just want to share with you some things that God has spoken to me as like for sures that hold me anchored in his love and also the knowledge that he has authorized and, and blessed me as a, a shepherd in his kingdom alongside my husband. And so if you turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, the creation account, in uh, verse 27 it begins and it says, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God created both male and female distinctly. It's very, very important that we acknowledge that God created men to reflect his image in a particular way that women won't. And he created women in a particular way that will reflect his image that men won't. That we have been created distinctly, separately, differently. He could have just created men and there would have been no need for women. He could have just done that. But when he, when that was the situation, God looked and he said, this isn't good. It's not good for men to be alone. So God created men and women distinctly unique. We physically, women can't do things that men can do. Men can't do things that women can do. Although I bet there's some women there that would be like, yeah, next time you have that baby. But that's not God's plan. And so it's good for us to recognize that we reflect his image in this world in different ways. And that's okay. It doesn't make one way more significant than the other. And then in verse 28, it says, then God blessed them. Who did he bless? The man, the woman. He blessed them together. And he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and all the animals that scurry along the ground. God blessed them and then he gave them both men and women, this commission to reign together, that this was God's intentional and original plan and design, that this would be God's good intention. When God saw this, he saw that it was good after he put this into place. Now we know from the Gen Genesis 3 account that men and women fell and there was a curse that was given to both men and women and now there was death had entered the world. Anyway, that's a whole theological thing. We are not going to get into that. But the beautiful news is that Jesus came and Jesus broke the curse and he took the power of death away and we are no longer as men and women under that curse we are now under the grace and blessing of God he, Jesus came to earth to make all things new and to bring God's intentional design and then he echoes this same charge that's given in Genesis 1 now it's a different kind of charge it's a spiritual one but in Matthew 28 Jesus comes and he says, I have now been given all authority 
because I came down like a boss and I died on the cross and I've taken the keys of death and now with all the authority I say to you my disciples to you men and women together be fruitful well, that sounds like Genesis here. One, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion and make disciples. Go into all the earth and teach people about me. Have dominion. This is God's spiritual echo and it's a prophetic echo and it is given to both sons and daughters. Now, it is very important again to recognize that in the process of leading together, of, of loving and being a voice together in the kingdom, we never ever seek to be in, in competition, men and women with each other. Men have been given a, a charge and husbands have been given a responsibility over households to, to be the head of the home. And this is a blessing for women. Women, you are the heart of the home. Women, without a heart, that home is not functioning well. Know your role is a blessed role. It's blessed of God. Anytime a woman feels like she needs to steal or take strength from a man to get strength herself is, is operating with a usurpatory spirit. And that is actually pride and that's why Satan fell. It is demonic in, in just its very essence. Women, recognize the beauty of who you are called as. Rise up and shine. This is an hour right now in the world and in the church where God is calling his daughters to speak, to speak with boldness, to speak with truth. When you speak, women, you release the kingdom of God, you release freedom, you release the heart of God. You are so necessary, your voice is necessary, and it's always God's intention that men and women are reigning together. It wasn't good when men were alone. It is good when we're together in this, when we're walking in unity, when we're walking in love, and uh, when we're walking submitted to Jesus Christ. Love you, happy Women's Day. Hope this blesses you. That's all for now, bye.